What would it take to make an honest attempt at lunar colonization? So I think space colonization, even though I'm all for it, mm -hmm. is going to be longer term than we thought. Imagine stumbling upon an oasis in the most unexpected of places, not on Earth, but on the Moon. Recent missions armed with cutting-edge remote sensing technologies, like NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and India's Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft, have done just that. They've uncovered water ice in the permanently shadowed craters at the Moon's poles, regions forever hidden from the Sun's glare. This discovery is not just about finding water, it's about uncovering a potential lifeline that could redefine future lunar exploration and colonization. First of all, we have to leave the Earth. The Earth in five billion years will be destroyed. That's a law of physics. The significance of finding water ice on the Moon cannot be overstated. Water is essential for life as we know it, offering hydration for astronauts and the possibility of extracting oxygen for breathable air. But the implications stretch even further. Think about rocket fuel. Hydrogen and oxygen derived from water are powerful propellants. By mining and processing this lunar ice, we could drastically cut the costs of space exploration, making more sustainable and longer missions a reality. Climate change will make Earth a living hell. So there's a chance we could terraform Mars. You turn something that's not like Earth into something that's like Earth. Moreover, this water could be a game-changer for building habitats on the Moon, providing materials to shield astronauts from cosmic and solar radiation when combined with lunar regolith. But how much water are we talking about? The permanently shadowed regions might hold millions of tons of water ice. Yet, accessing this treasure trove won't be easy. The depth, purity, and the frigid, dark conditions of these craters pose significant challenges for any robotic mission aiming to tap into this resource. This discovery isn't just about practical applications. It's a window into the Moon's geological history and the evolution of our solar system. By studying the isotopic composition of this ice, scientists can trace its origins, whether it came from comets, asteroids, or the solar wind. This knowledge could provide insights into how water came to Earth and the Moon, deepening our understanding of our place in the cosmos. For a terrestrial comparison, consider Antarctica's dry valleys, some of the driest and coldest places on Earth. Despite their arid conditions, these valleys harbor water ice, preserved in permafrost and shadowed nooks much like the moon's poles. Studying these earthly analogues helps us understand the potential for life in extreme conditions, the stability of water in shadowed environments, and how we might utilize in situ resources on other worlds. The discovery of water ice on the moon is a reminder of the surprises our universe holds. It challenges us to rethink our approach to space exploration, emphasizing sustainability and the clever use of off-Earth resources. As we prepare for future missions, this lunar oasis beckons, promising not just survival, but a stepping stone to the wider cosmos. Have you ever gazed up at the night sky and wondered if there's more to the moon than meets the eye? Among the many celestial mysteries, the moon holds a special place in human curiosity, sparking a blend of scientific inquiry and imaginative theories. One such fascination revolves around its perfect tidal locking with Earth, a synchrony so precise that it has fueled conspiracies of intentional design. Is it possible that this alignment is not just a stroke of cosmic luck, but a deliberate act by advanced civilizations or even extraterrestrial beings? Let's dive deeper. Tidal locking, a gravitational dance that results in one face of the moon always pointing toward Earth, is often cited as too perfect to be natural. This phenomenon occurs because the gravitational pull of Earth exerts a torque on the moon, gradually slowing its rotation until its orbital and rotational periods match. But rather than pointing to alien architects, this is a natural outcome of celestial mechanics, a common occurrence not just in our Earth-Moon system but across many moons in the solar system. Every major moon of Jupiter and Saturn, for instance, shares this trait, highlighting its naturalness rather than suggesting otherworldly intervention. But the mysteries don't end there. The moon has also been the center of theories about alien bases hidden within its craters, spurred by anomalous photographic evidence and peculiar lunar phenomena. 
Strange structures, lights, and transient lunar phenomena have been interpreted by some as signs of extraterrestrial activity. However, a closer look at these anomalies often reveals natural explanations, such as meteorite impacts, lunar seismic activity, or the simple trickery of pareidolia, where our brains create familiar patterns from random shapes. The intrigue around the moon's features isn't isolated. Similar speculation surrounds Phobos, one of Mars's moons, whose odd orbit and shape have led to theories about its artificial origins. This fascination with celestial bodies and their anomalies taps into a long-standing human tradition of storytelling, where the mysteries of the cosmos fuel our imagination and drive us to weave intricate narratives around the stars and planets, much like ancient civilizations did with their myths. In exploring these theories and the natural phenomena that explain them, we continue the timeless quest to understand our place in the universe, blurring the lines between scientific discovery and the boundless realm of human imagination. Ever pondered how our moon came to be? The story of its origin is not just a tale of cosmic events, but a narrative that intertwines with the very fabric of our solar system's history. Scientists have spun theories, each unraveling a part of this celestial mystery offering a glimpse into the dynamic processes that shaped not only the Moon, but Earth itself. Among the contenders, the giant impact hypothesis, capture theory, and binary accretion each paint a unique picture of lunar genesis. Imagine, if you will, a cosmos where colossal impacts were the norm. The giant impact hypothesis takes center stage in this drama, proposing a scenario where the early Earth, in its youthful vigor, collided with a Mars-sized entity affectionately dubbed Theia, the aftermath of this titanic clash? Debris scattered far and wide, eventually coalescing to birth the moon. This theory isn't just a favorite because of its dramatic flair. It's backed by compelling evidence. The chemical signatures of Earth and its satellite are eerily similar, particularly their oxygen isotopes, hinting at a shared origin. Computer simulations add weight to this argument, showing that such catastrophic events were likely in the solar system's chaotic youth capable of creating a debris disk from which the moon could emerge. Yet not all tales are of violent beginnings. Enter the capture theory, a narrative of cosmic serendipity where the moon, once a nomadic celestial body, was ensnared by Earth's gravitational embrace. Romantic as it may sound, this theory faces challenges, particularly when it comes to the striking compositional similarities between Earth and its constant companion. If the moon hailed from a distant part of the solar system, why then do they share such a remarkable isotopic resemblance? Then there's the tale of binary accretion, suggesting Earth and Moon were born together from the same stellar nursery, growing side by side like siblings. This theory attempts to explain their compositional kinship, but stumbles over the intricacies of angular momentum and the peculiarities of the Moon's smaller core compared to Earth's. Our lunar companion's origin story is unique, not just in the context of our solar system, but in the grand tapestry of the cosmos. While many moons of Jupiter and Saturn are thought to have formed from the planets surrounding gas and dust, the moon's genesis seems to follow a different script. And as our understanding deepens, new theories emerge, like the Synestia theory, which posits the moon was born from a vaporized rock donut, challenging and refining our perceptions of how celestial bodies come into being. The journey to unravel the moon's mysteries is a testament to human curiosity, a drive to understand our place in the universe through the lens of our closest celestial neighbor. As we gaze upon its surface, lit by the sun or softly glowing in the night sky, we're reminded of the cosmic ballet that brought it into existence, a dance of matter, energy, and time that continues to captivate and inspire.